Hearts of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. That fella over there, why, that's Bob Pollock from the Extension Service joining us this morning on this smoky day. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And uh, you can give us a call at 479-1160 or 349-WCCS if you have a question to ask of Bob. Uh, meanwhile, I'll ask you a question. What's all this smoke doing to our plants? Uh, are they growing? Are they affected by it at all? Uh, yes, I'd have to say they are affected. Uh huh. Because it's cloudy, it's preventing the sun from reaching the ground, mm-hmm. and the plants need sun to function, do their that big word called photosynthesis. Uh, they need that sunlight to to do that and to perform their functions. So yeah, so cloudy days and or smoky days are going to yeah. impact that. And, you know, it's keeping the temperature down, although it did finally warm up yesterday afternoon, Mm -hmm. kind of all of a sudden. But temperature has been a little cooler than we would like, too. So that limits plant growth. This has been an awful weather year. It's been been different, hasn't it? Yeah, it it really, really has. Um, And uh, so we we have to deal with it. We don't have any choice. Um, And we wonder about the effects that it's going to have on us long term. It slows slows everything up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they're not going to grow as fast. They're going to kind of sit there a little bit more, waiting for those conditions. You know they're, and if we can just get through this, uh, we'll turn the corner hopefully and yeah. Go from well, there. by this time of the year, usually the weather patterns uh, don't allow that cold <laughs> Canadian air to come down in. But the weather pattern is so different this year that. Uh, uh, the air from the south that generally brings us mm-hmm. our summer weather just isn't here. No, it's keeping it keeping it south. So, and I guess one advantage of that is that there are some pests that come up from the south, mm-hmm. from those growing regions that are ahead of us, uh, plant earlier and harvest earlier. And and normally we have some pests like the corn earworm and the fall army worm, um, as well as some diseases that will come come in and they usually come in on the storm fronts and, and we observe and watch for those and, and trap for those pests. And, and so they've been suppressed to this point uh, just because of that airflow is not allowing them to move as they might normally move or as quickly as they would move north. Mm-hmm. Now for those pests that are still here, yeah. um, the spotted lantern fly is the one that has gotten all of the, all of the, big attention here in the last couple of years before that it was the emerald ash borer uh, but they basically did their work and said well there's nothing left here to eat let's move on uh, that's that's how that's how we got rid of that one um but um uh, you know i don't know that um that uh, they're having as much to eat this year because everything is so slow in the growth cycle i want to ask lynette later this morning um we'll have lynette yarnick on from yarnick's farm market what it's done uh, for their crops, I, I know that they and they have plenty of them. But uh, for instance, I know that they're looking forward to sweet corn and and maybe even this weekend. So we'll have to ask her about that. Are there you, you go. Are you hearing things That'll, about uh, corn crops and things like that? Yeah, there, it's coming along. Um, you know, but again, it just you're maybe not getting as much or as quick as we might normally get it. It just slowing things up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there'll be. There's corn for the fourth. I don't think there'll be any issues with that. But, you know, and then moisture-wise, and and some things like our our lawns, for example, like it a little cooler. Uh, Yeah. So there's been a resurgence, and a lot of that's been because we've gotten more moisture recently. Uh, We're just, you know, for the week um, and even for the month, we're slightly ahead of normal. Uh, Still behind for the year, though. Mm Mm-hmm. But those recent rains have helped us catch up and then in return have greened up the yards a little bit. All right, let's get our caller. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Dr. Bob. Uh, I have a question about uh, slugs. And uh, my question is, when are they uh, most active uh, in that would be weather periods and 
time of the year period. The reason I'm asking is because I tried your uh, beer trap, and uh, I found that the beer evaporated rather quickly. Uh, so uh, I guess it cost-saving major major on my part, mm-hmm. and also just information. I hear the beer disappears at Bob's house pretty fast, too. <laughs> <laughs> Those slugs, they're <laughs> terrible about that. Yeah, so they are very active. This, You know, once we get into spring and summer, um, they're active. Uh, you might see them on hostas uh, or one of yep. the plants that they really like, and there's other plants as well as that they'll – They'll eat the foliage. Um, they'll make kind of. Uh, they'll literally eat the leaves, chew the leaves, and they usually leave a slime trail behind them because their bodies they need moisture. Uh, when it's really dry, you won't see them very much. You still might find damage because they can hide in underneath plants. Um, and stay where it's moist down in the soil and at the base, very base of plants. Uh, and then at night they'll come up and, and feed or very early in the morning. Uh, and then when the sun comes out, uh, these cloudy conditions can be beneficial to them because, what yeah, what sun? Uh, <clears throat> because they, they have a little bit more ability to expose themselves and not dry out. Uh, so they have that, that slime coating over them, which is a moisture coating, which helps protect them. Uh, if you just lay them out in the dry concrete or driveway and don't let them loose, they'll eventually succumb to that. They'll dry out, desiccate, and, and die. Um, or if you have a trap, you can, uh, and you could use a little bit of yeast, uh, so you don't have to use beer, but something with oh. uh, a little bit of yeast, you know, some water and a little bit of yeast mixed up. Uh, that'll also attract them to those bait traps. The other way to trap them is just to use, uh, you can take a board, yeah. oh. you know, okay. and just put a board um, between the rows of plants uh, and then just lay it there. And because that's a place to hide, they, yep. you know, and then in the morning you go out and you flip the board up and, yep. oh, there you ah, go. Look what I've got. Yeah, look what I've got. Uh, and then you can hand pick those and, and just, you know, put them in the yeah. water or dispose of them. Uh, they are hard to squash. Many of those slugs also <laughs> run for public office, so you can get them there. <laughs> <laughs> can't resist. Ding, hey, ding. <laughs> thanks for the information and the jocularity. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful day. If, if, <laughs> thanks. Bye-bye. If, if you see some tattered uh, holes in plant leaves, uh, that might be. The, they're not a real clean feeder, uh, so they'll kind of make... They'll feed between the veins, typically. Uh huh. Yeah, the slugs. Yeah, they're, I, I said slobs. They're oh, slobs. they're slob. Yeah, <laughs> they're not they're, a clean feeder. No, no. Okay. Yeah, so they'll they'll feed between the veins. They won't necessarily eat the veins, but they'll eat the uh-huh. tissue between the veins because it's easier to eat. They don't. Uh, like so the you floss. might get this striped. Yeah. <laughs> no, they probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a striping on your plants. Uh, yeah, on the yeah, leaves there. yeah, and it's and it's not always a nice, neat it, hole uh, or round hole or anything. Mm-hmm. It'll be more of a tattered feeding. But that, because a lot of times you can see the damage, but you will not see the slug. Yeah, uh, yeah. We get um, questions about tomato blight, early blight, late yeah. blight every single year at this time, um, and I don't know that the weather that we've had this year and the weirdness of the skies and the smoke and everything. I don't know that that would portend anything up or down on, on blight. No, other, other than we're not getting as much of that southerly flow yet of those weather patterns and the air movement. So that is kind of keeping things down. And there's been no, no reports of late blight pretty much anywhere in yeah. the U S yeah. um, you They're, do advocate, though, that uh, if you have the have the powder, you might as well put it on them. Well, yeah. So if you're if you're treating tomatoes, um, there still are other diseases. You know, late blight is just one disease that are that attacks tomatoes. So we still have early blight. We have 
alternaria leaf spot we have and then there's a series of you know wilts uh, fusarium and verticillium wilts and and other uh, either fungi or back there's bacterial spec and bacterial spot and so there's just a host of different potential pests that we can have some of those bacterial issues actually when you buy the seed so if you buy the seed and grow your own transplants some of those can actually be in the seed and so you've not you've done everything right um, you've grown you know you've planted them you, you've sowed them you've planted you've grown those transplants you've planted them out and then you end up with bacterial speck or bacterial spot um, and it was nothing you did uh, it's just that those particular seed had that in there mm -hmm. and there's really no way unless the company that you bu purchase it from tests for that you won't know it's there until yeah. it manifests in the disease itself I'm sure that there's some sort of subculture where people are monitoring what seed companies do and uh, and what their practices are and what their results have been in terms of what you were just talking of and and they probably avoid this company or that and yeah. and favor uh, some other company because they think that they've got a better advantage and a better chance. You usually find that stuff out after the fact. Um, and there's a lot of resellers too. So you might buy seed, but it wasn't necessarily from the breeder that, you know, or the company that bred mm -hmm. those seed. Uh, it might be a distributor um, or it might be, you know, a couple people down the line. Uh, you get a catalog in the mail and, you know, you don't know whether they're just purchasing seed from a variety of places and then they're they're marketing that as their products um, and so there are a couple ways to try to prevent against that there are some seed treatments um, and there's a hot water seed bath that you can use for tomato seeds and pepper seeds um, but you've got to got to do use it right. the proper temperatures for the yeah. proper time because you can literally uh, boil the seed, <laughs> yeah. um, and then it won't germinate at all. And cook them up pretty good. That's right. He is Bob Pollock. Thanks so much. You're welcome. We appreciate it. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com.